Today, my friend Trevor and I are exploring a beautiful ancient river gravel deposit a couple hundred feet above the current riverbed up the Cache La Poudre River Canyon northwest of Fort Collins, about 30 miles, where we will see some stunning rocks in the midst of some equally beautiful scenery. <laughs> Looking down on the canyon through Google Earth, as if looking from space, one sees a long, deep east-to-west gash through some amazing geology, including a lot of basement rock that was pushed up from great depths during the Laramide orogeny and all of the associated metamorphic uh, transformations of the overlying rock when that took place. Today we will be looking for primarily epidote, epidocite, and unikite, along with other amphibolite and related rocks. Before reaching our final destination, we'll yeah, stop so here cool. and look at this unexpected treasure trove of driftwood. Here we are with Burkle and my good friend Trevor. We're out on a massive wood pile. It's not a beaver dam, it's just driftwood piled up by the river. Really cool. I guess I better catch up to those guys. Actually, I shouldn't say those guys. Burkle is here with me. It's one good one. Just one big rock on it. <laughs> We're thinking of ideas for rock stands. I think I have some room for some of these in the granite paradise too. So we're actually going up the mountain to an ancient gravel deposit that Trevor is leading me to. So this gravel was obviously deposited when the river was way up there. At least that's my current take on the matter and there's our car. Here's a really nice piece of migmatite. Beautiful banding. Again, we're on our way up to an ancient gravel bed. We're already quite a ways up, there's the road. This is really cool because I'm seeing certain rocks up here that I have already in uh, Fort Collins. And this kind of tells us where they're coming from. This is beautiful pyroxene is what it looks like mm -hmm. in the matrix. It almost looks like it's a vein. Like this was yeah. one side of the vein. This is the other and the crystals grew in from the sides. Again, it's a little fractured because it's been sitting here for a very long time. So cool. Nice amphibolite right there. We're still not at the place. I think we can still see the car down there. We're getting there. Looked over to the left here from where we were just talking and Trevor spotted this. Beautiful quartz vein in, in epidote. Epidocyte. Epidocyte because it's the pure green with quartz. Very cool. The uh, coolness factor, I was telling Trevor, I always talk about comparing the ratio of whether of a leverite and a takerite, and it depends how far it is to the car and what kind of terrain you're going over. So I don't know, this one's pretty cool, but we're gonna have to think about it. March 22nd, that's awfully early for flowers to be coming out in my estimation since this is usually when there's the most snow up here. We're finding already a lot of unikites and epidotes and we haven't even really gotten to the gravel bed yet but you can see how high up we're getting. So here we're starting to get to where it's pretty much all big old river cobbles. We're up quite a ways. 
I wanted to get a picture of this in situ. So this is how frost works on rock rocks. This is a nice piece of either epidocite or something along those lines. It's a beautiful lime green and it's broke right there. You wonder how long that took to happen. So I've been telling Chris about this quartz getting the iron coming out because of the acid rain and then here we are. There's We're all the iron. Chunk. Yeah. Jeez, that's so cool. Yeah, I have a few of those. Now I know. Mm -hmm. Oops, I shut my water off. So this is that epidote we were just looking at. It's not very exciting, but it is really green. It has little chunks of quartz. The quartz got blown up. Here's the broken piece. Yeah, that one's easiest to see, probably. So it's, Honestly, the other side, the smooth side. It's good, solid material. You can see the little quartz bits in it. Wow. Blown to bits. Huh. Spray that one since it's clean. So that's what it looks like. This hillside is just covered with this epidote. Epidocite, unikite. That would be, yeah, that's epidocite. Because it's just quartz and epidote, basically. A little too big to carry home, considering the trek we just did to get here. That's why we make YouTube videos now. <laughs> so here's another big boulder of that dendritic pyroxene. Forgive me if I'm naming it incorrectly, but it kind of has a dendritic pattern. But can you see the reflection of the sun in that? There we go, I think it's showing. Big old crystals. That's gonna, that's a lever right. Because again, doing the math of what it would take to get it back, the math doesn't work out. <laughs> what a nice piece though. We're actually starting to get tired of epidote and unikite. Yeah. I know. I, yeah. Can we ever get tired of it? That is so green. Wow. Oh, and it's cracked too. Just like that one. I'm going to dig him up. All right. So this one might meet the criteria. It's really a dark green. I can't, I don't have enough water to get the dirt off it. But what little is showing is nice and green it's fairly solid it's layered which is interesting that one might have to come back i'll have to do the math and see if it works out so trevor and i are talking about the amazing amount of unikite and epidote that seem to be up here and they're smooth they've withstood sitting here on the hillside for who knows how long and these other rocks Here's a piece of granite. That'll cut your hand, rubbing your hand across that. The same with these. They've been sitting here for so long that just the frost action has destroyed them. You wonder how long have they been sitting here for the river to get all the way down there. We're saying maybe 50,000 years, but that's just a guess. I'm sure Burkle knows. She knows, but she won't tell us. Burkle's paw. Oh, I'm killing them. Oh, that's, those are some bright red ants. All right, you better put them back. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that is green. Wow, Trevor, this is a nice, attractive rock. You spotted it, so. But if you don't want it, it's going to come with one of it's us. Yeah. So Trevor pointed to a rock, and I thought he was talking about this. Because that is kind of cool. Yeah. But he was talking about this. Big unikite. Epidose of unikite. <laughs> I guess all of them. Paused it. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's see what that looks like with water. Oh my. Yeah, the lighting isn't very good. This is uh, away from the sun, but that's pretty vivid. Very nice find. As you can see, 
It's big. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful, uh, I don't know, would we call it a unikite or what? Yeah, I mean, those are feldspars in there. So, yeah. It's after nice, probably. Well, after, uh, no, granted, that's... Well, look at the layers, though. I would say, I would call it a schist. There's not enough... Okay. Uh, excuse me, Burkle. Just had to show this in situ. That's a nice, solid green. Very fine green. It's got a crack in it, though. I don't think I'll take it. Do you have any interest in this? So I'm wondering if this is wow. kind of a deformed version of echelon, echelon folding, I believe, is where it is, where this side of the rock was moving this way, this side moved that way, and enough fracture, but it's really hard to tell. It might just be a unique vein. That's a big rock, though. It's staying right there. I mean, it might be to somebody. Here are a couple for the think about it pile. Very pretty. These red ones I have a lot at home, so I doubt I'll take it, but these I also have some at home, but the veining is so nice. Was in good shape. How much is a guy willing to carry? That is the question. To go way down there. What a beautiful day. So we've been finding these all day long. Just kind of a solid green. That has kind of some pattern. Go ahead and pull that out of there. Yes, yeah, definitely got a little bit of pattern. It's pretty iron rich, but oh man, there's some good bands actually underneath this black stone. Oh yeah. Very nice green too. Oh look at the bands on that side. That might have to go in, at least in the pile to think about. Yeah, it's got a big quartz vein right there too. And some, and some unikite here. Yeah, that's got a nice pattern to it. It's hard to get it cleaned off with a spray bottle though. But it's, that shows it enough. And there's some good reds in it. So we've been looking for a spot for a think about it pile so that we can kind of wander around here without our heavy backpacks. And this rock is probably the determining factor of the think about it pile. That's a that's an amazing just pure epidote, you think? Uh what well, lots of iron oxide left over. So it must have started as a grain of diorite or amphibole. Boy, that's beautiful. So occasionally we find rhyolites in the pooter, not very often. Let's see what these look like wet. Is that two color? I think it's yellow and purple. Well, part of it was in the ground. Yeah, so it's hard to say still. This is definitely purplish. Yeah, purple one, and those of you who are from places where a rhyolite is abundant, you would probably never pick these up. But they're interesting just because it's so rare here. It's... And we're trying to figure out where they're coming from. I personally think it's from the ancient. Very uh, ancient. Very, very ancient Rocky Mountains that were here before. And these are just left over. Wow. Which is like I'm still torn over this big one. If it didn't have so many cracks, there wouldn't be a question. But Oh, the think about it pile. <laughs> Spray it all down. <laughs> yep. Always got to boil down the think about it pile. I already have a few big green ones in my pack. I'm going to let Trevor take all these. No. <laughs> I'm debating it. Beautiful little amphibolite. I've got a few of these at home. Trevor just picked this up. Thank you, Trevor. Yep. Oh, you're That's all blurry. There you go. <laughs> now the rock's all blurry. Okay. My camera takes a second to refocus. the wind is deceiving the camera. Too. Blame the wind. 
Very cool little piece. Not sure what the crystals are. Well, the matrix. See, I would I would think their horn blend is the background and then the phenocrysts are who knows. <laughs> so we're here making our decisions on the rock, the leverite versus takerite formula. And so this is a really pretty rock. But if you see there, it's cracked down the middle that way. And it's cracked. It's really cracked all over. There's another big crack. So as pretty and green as that is, I mean, it's about a 40 pounder. I would probably go to the hospital if I tried to take it home anyway. It's gonna stay here for the next guy. Let's get one more look at it wet though. Just to say that we did. That's about as green as they get. But that leaves room in my pack for some of these others. So Trevor broke this rock. This is one of these rocks with all the vugs. And I have several of these at home. Uh, it's some type of amphibolite. This particular piece is mostly quartz though, which is interesting. Oh, I think it was a vein. You think it's a vein within the amphibolite? Yeah, the quartz. Yeah, the quartz. I think what happened is because it was mafic, the quartz was insulated by the mafic stuff and concentrated. And then, you know, while it was ionizing, it absorbed some of the mafic stuff, which is the hematite, the limonite. Wow, and that's just rusting out of there. Literally rusting out. Very cool. I'll have to sacrifice one of mine and break it open. Yeah. All right, those of you who are hard-headed rock hounds you know the story your backpack's already full we're heading back down but you just gotta bend over and pick up one more i'm zooming in on you on the rock <laughs> yeah those are green yeah and shiny oh man wow the sparkles in there it's gonna be a long trip back to the car yeah. <laughs> Sparkle <it> is, man. <laughs> very cool all these trees are from a fire quite a few years ago. That's why they're dead. They're not deciduous trees, they were pines. Just gotta keep this one. It's full of little vugs, but I don't know. I hope this shows in the video the reflections of the crystals. They're very big, reflective, probably epidote crystals would be my guess. Yeah, there, there, they're the reflecting. Wow. Pack's getting heavier and we still got a long ways to go. I am always amazed and thankful to God for the combination of cataclysmic events on a biblical scale along with long, slow geologic and erosional processes that lead to the fascinating places and things that we can see today. These rocks and this place are truly amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming along. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And by all means, leave your comments. They're always greatly appreciated. Nice.